we'll, we'll come back to the sort of negotiation side of things. I'll ask you for more questions before we finish. But I want to kind of come on because I think it does bring it on nicely to um, the, the the challenge question because what we what, what what I'm going to do is ask a question that's been sent in. But it's it's a question this week that is very easy to go straight and answer tactically. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to see how you sort of would respond to this, and we'll um, <laughs> we'll have a bit of a um, uh, yeah a, a, a to and a fro, and we'll try and mastermind, and uh, you know hopefully the person that sent this in will um, will will get the benefit for it. But the the question that's come is where do I find clients now that travel is dicey and things like events, conferences, exhibitions, mm-hmm. meetups, networking events, that kind of thing um, are all out of the question and, and and aren't going on anymore. What do I do? How would I how would I go about finding clients? It's a great question. And as you said, it's very relevant to an awful lot of people these days. Uh, as you said, when just the physical meeting people or wh- whatever format they're used to getting clients maybe has, has paused or, or slowed down. As you said, for me, the, the principle is to step back, zoom out a bit. Um, and it's to first ask, instead of going, how do I get new clients? Let's go, well, hold on. Well, that, that's sort of almost another section. The, the request I'm hearing behind it is, how do I keep, how do I keep revenue up? Right? How, do I, how do I make money, essentially? How do I make profit? How do I make revenue? And, and the, the request is, how do I get new clients? Mm. So the first question is, well, hold on. What do you have as an asset already with your current client base? So that would be where I'd start. I mean, it's the classic Jay Abram thing of, you know, if you want to grow a business, you can get more customers. You can increase the average, you know, value per sale, which is revenue and or profit, depending on how you want to think about it. Or you can increase the regularity. So if your customer, most customers buy only once a year, can you make that once every nine months or once every mm-hmm. 10 months and increase uh, it, sales over time that way? So there's a lot of different thoughts there going on just just in the perception because as we said we're jumping to the assumption that we need new clients Mm. this is the uh, and i'm not i don't mean to go off topic but it is the parallel i find when i i know a lot of it people and when someone's coming asking for i want to improve traffic versus i want to improve conversion yes because you know traffic you're just throwing you're hosing more more people at the thing but you're only capturing a certain number, whereas if you have the same number, you capture more. So, as I said, the, the, the equivalent there is what do you do? What are you doing currently for your clients? So, again, not to get too tactical yet, the, the next thoughts would be, uh, would be, first of all, having a discovery conversations with your current clients. What do you do really well? Where do they? What are their? What are their needs? First of all, what are their needs? Almost mm. without you, then what are their needs, and how do they experience the relationship with you? And some of that can immediately show new opportunities. The next one, there are more general way of strategic way is a lot of people add either a premium level of their service, or you know almost the Ryanair version of their service, but to no frills. And what I what I mean by that is maybe. I'm just giving an example again with websites and stuff like this. So maybe there's a premium version where you actually do a certain level of coaching of of the business owner's team to manage certain aspects of the website themselves. Or, for example, you flip it the other way and you do like these are the, the maintenance things that you need to make sure you have in place every month, like security and maybe there's a bit of SEOing or whatever. Mm. So that there's at least a fee for a small level of activities per month, which you didn't have before. So again, it's kind of the premium and the Ryanair. Is it possible or easy for you to add one or other of those? Is it possible for you know a mastermind coaching group, all that kind of thing, for, for giving more of your expertise? Mm. But all of that starts, as you said, with actually having the curiosity to engage with your current or mm. past clients. And not just, you see this on LinkedIn a lot, there's almost this desperation where they're in going, oh, here's the things that I'm selling, you know, or do you want to buy stuff from me? Rather than, or, or it's kind of this, pleasantness but you're kind of waiting for the pitch mm. which is also uncomfortable well i'm sort of just going look hey how's it going what are your needs on this or i would love to know your thoughts on the work we've done together because i'm always trying to improve and any feedback you give 
would be hugely appreciated yada yada and then even just having a short survey or a look could you do you have a 15 minute call that you can have and on that you might you'll in a more genuine authentic way overuse word but you know and again in a way with integrity that's better mm. uh, you, you discover opportunities where you can add genuine value for your client and that's all from your current client base never mind yeah. getting new clients that's all that's the next question absolutely and 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 that's what i mean i can certainly see and hear the uh the the coach in you that's uh, come out mm. with that because what you're what you're searching for and i find this is a lot with a lot of questions that that are coming in and all the rest of it it's it's actually searching for the question behind the question and mm. really understanding what is being asked and that's part of the curiosity thing and there wasn't the leading with an assumption with what um, you know in your response there and and I think it would have been very easy to go into tactics and all oh, right well you've just got to go onto you know Facebook and throw money at it or go connect with a million people a day on LinkedIn or whatever it may well be you've actually gone no well what is the what is actually being asked here it's like if I need new clients it's generally because I need revenue so is new clients brand new clients the only way to generate revenue exactly. and um, it- it's a brilliant point, and as I'm sure you well know, I mean, it's generally easier to reignite a, a former relationship with a client than to to convince, as you said, or give a compelling argument to a new one. Mm. And so. I think that behind all of that as well, and and what you've just been through, and and some of the you know the great ideas and suggestions is ultimately this person is talking and asking a question: How do I get new clients? Because those things are no longer on the table. So things like events, conferences, networking, all that kind of thing, which says to me, in the past, a lot of their business, their clients have come as a result of relationships. Mm. What you're talking there is really an extension of those relationships that you've spent so long actually Mm. building through those ones. So why not go back to them? Rather than thinking, I can't go to new things. Well, we are making the assumption here and maybe it's the wrong thing but the assumption is that if you're if you're struggling that these things aren't available to you it would logically suggest and my hypothesis would be that that person has spent time doing those things to generate the business they've got so not just clients and going back to talking to clients but what about the people that you've met at those previous events what about the people that you've met through the networking and the conferences and the seminars and all that kind of thing. And the possibility is that like a lot of people, and I've had people on the show that, um, you know, talk about the failure to follow up. Yeah. Might have, you might have been missing a little bit, but you can swallow that kind of like, ah, oh, I never did that follow up. And if you can find a lot of the contacts and the people that you met and all the rest of it, if you haven't connected with them on LinkedIn, go and connect and, and all that kind of thing, reignite the relationship or restart a conversation that you may have had with someone from one of those events in whatever way that looks like. I mean, it's here's a novel idea. Yeah. You know, those things that are in our pockets <laughs> <laughs> that we do nothing on except the thing that they were originally designed for. That is a phone. <laughs> we can pick up the phone and we can talk to people. We can have a chat, yeah. I mean, that's it, a novel, crazy idea. It's a novel, crazy idea. I mean, it, the, the flip side of that is, you know, people are super busy and I think yeah. there's a wariness of that. Just like you, you were saying before before on our call there that, you know, things are hectic because you are you have the, the t- daddy teacher hat and then, you know, uh, the, the entrepreneur mm. hat and all these hats, you know. Um, so getting a call out of the blue, it can't be just to shoot the breeze either, you know. Mm. Uh, but but it's a very good point that all the same, because I just wanted to address that concern that a lot of people would have, is that if you, like the other thing, just as we're paralleling that, I, um, I did a seminar there with a guy who's an expert on LinkedIn, and it was very interesting in the sense that he was saying, before you're even reaching out to new people, consider just looking through your network. Most people have mm. four or five, six hundred people. It's like, have you actually had conversations recently with all of them? Of course you have. So just, you know, search them, bring them up, and you can just go, you know, there's an info. So if you need to look it up on YouTube, you can see when in their contact is where you hit contact. At the bottom, it tells you when you connected. Mm. And you just go, hi, Bob, you know, uh, I noticed we connected way back in 2016. Um, apologies, I never fully reached out to you, you know, but I'm 
doing so now. Hope this finds you well. You know, could you t- I'd love to learn a little bit more about your business and your service and your blah, blah, blah. And, and do it in, in you being interested in them, uh, mm-hmm. you know, initially and in understanding their situation. And then you can move it into a value add or suggest a, a virtual coffee over Zoom. And all of a sudden you're talking to a potential client. Yeah. And even if you're not, you're doing it in a way that you're positioning yourself to be able to say, look, if you know anyone who needs what my service is, please pass me on to them. And sometimes people, I mean, I have had this where people go, oh, well, I don't need you now, but I know a guy. He's got, yeah. you got to talk to this guy, you know, and then suddenly yeah. you have actually a new client. Um, but it feels in a way that's far more um, sort of authentic or with integrity. Yeah, and it's, all of it's the, having a conversation, isn't it? It's having a conversation. It, starting yeah. from that interest-based position finding out about people and, and going in with no expectation other than to discover something fun and interesting about people. Absolutely. And, and it's you know, what it's, you said, we keep coming back to the word, but it's it's so true. Curiosity, you know, be genuinely curious. And people are like, oh, this person's interested in what I'm about and how I do stuff. 